Well, shalom, my friends. Uh, today is uh, uh, the day that is the International Holocaust Remembrance Day. Uh, every year, at the end of January, on the 27th of January to be exact, there is a day of remembrance for the Holocaust. This is different from the Yom HaShoah uh, remembrance, which usually uh, comes in May, uh, in, in Israel, this is the International Holocaust Remembrance Day, and uh, it was established in 2005 by uh, United Nations, of all people. And uh, it's, so it's only about, what, 17 years uh, um, old, not that old, but it's the, it's the day of the year where the international community is reminded to pause and reflect and uh, remember the horrors of the Holocaust. So I just wanted to take a moment of your day to remind you of a couple of things and also to uh, uh, encourage you to possibly do a few things with your family, with your children, extremely important, and with your uh, friends and co-workers, whoever you have an influence on, uh, this would be a chance for you to make a difference. So let me first by uh, let me start by by telling you a story. Some of you might already know the story, but it's um, the story of my grandfather. Uh, I will tell you the story, and then I will put a link to a video of what happened to my mother seven years after the fact of that story, uh, and you can watch that video on my YouTube channel. So first of all, let me tell you. I have a picture here of my um, my grandfather. A uh, beautiful man here in that picture, Maurice Weinzweig, married to Bert Weinzweig, uh, my, gr my maternal grandmother. He um, was uh, in France uh, during Second World War, married to my grandmother, uh, living in the house where I grew up, uh, on the outskirts of Paris. And uh, at the time he was living in that house, he uh, was not there illegally, but he was a foreign national, uh, had... He was waiting for his uh, papers to be uh, uh, kind of like the equivalent of a green card in America. And he was married to my grandmother legally. And they had one daughter, my mother, Evelyn. Well, one uh, evening in uh, the summer of 1942, uh, he, um, uh, my, somebody knocked on the door uh, at my house, uh, their house back then. And uh, my grandmother opened the, do the door, and it was two men from the Gestapo asking to see my grandfather. My grandfather at the time was hiding in the basement of the house where they kept the coal for the, for the fireplace and, uh, and whatnot. And uh, they asked for him, and my grandmother lied, and she said, I don't know where he is, and uh, I haven't seen him in a while, and uh, I can't help you. And that's when the two men from the Gestapo said, we need him to come with us. And uh, if we, uh, we're going to come back tomorrow morning. If he's not available to come with us, we'll take you and your daughter. That would have been my grandmother and my mother. And she, at the time, my mother was 15 years old. So they left. She signaled her husband who came upstairs and she explained the story to him. And he said, well, if they, if they want to come back tomorrow, uh, they're looking for me. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave, I'm going to hide somewhere else, and when it's safe, I'll tell you where I am, and you'll come with Evelyn, and uh, we'll have you stay uh, at a new place to escape the Nazis. And that's when she said to her husband, well, the problem is if, we don't, if you don't show up tomorrow morning when they come back, they are taking both of us, Evelyn and I. And that's when he said, well, I can't let that happen. I will go with them. Don't worry, I'll come back. Next morning is the last day that my mother saw her father alive. He went with the Gestapo uh, officers, and within a week or so, he died uh, in Auschwitz, or possibly even on the train to Auschwitz. He died pretty quickly. Uh, we, we don't have any, the exact uh, details of his death, but within seven or eight days, he was dead. He never returned to Auschwitz. And at that moment, within a few days, my mother and two of her cousins were taken to the south of France to the free zone to hide on a farm, uh, until the end of the war. And that is that story that I will link to this video so you can actually see what took place and how it took place and how great, wonderful people who have been recognized as righteous among the nations uh, took care of my mother as a child, as a teenager during the war.
So that, again, that is the story of my grandfather, Maurice Weinzweig. And today's video really is, in his memory, one out of the six million. Uh, you know, I've been asked very often, uh, I'm, you know, I'm in my 60s now, and I've been asked for years, how come you haven't been to Israel? And, and until recently, I had not been to Israel, and I told friends and people, I don't think I can go to Israel until I have actually visited Auschwitz. I don't know why I said that. It's just one of those things. So in 2010, I actually went to Auschwitz to visit where my grandfather finished his days. And uh, this, every time I look at this, this is a piece of the railroad and a rock of the railroad of the train track that would come into Auschwitz-Birkenau that I brought back to remember my, uh, the fate of my grandfather, Morris Weinzweig. So... I'm telling you this story because it's a story of one Jewish man out of six million. And today we're asked to remember the Holocaust. A week and a half ago, I was reporting on a terrorist attack, anti-Semitic terrorist attack in Colleyville, Texas, an hour from where I live now. 2022, we still see those things happening and actually we're going to see more and more. We absolutely cannot stop educating our family, our friends, or, or, or the people that we have an influence on, on the Holocaust. There are several ways of doing it. Uh, one way is to read a good book on the Holocaust, and I recommend Night by Elie Wiesel, or The Sunflower by Simon Wiesenthal. There's other uh, books that I will put in a description that you can read to learn uh, about uh, the events of the Holocaust and the, the facts, the historical facts that so many are trying to erase or rewrite today, which is very scary because more people are trying to rewrite it and more and more people are, there are witnesses are dying off. So it's going to become more and more difficult to, it's crazy to even say that, to prove that the Holocaust happened. So the world depends on people like us to continue the, uh, the memory of the Holocaust, and that's why today is important. So read a book or watch a movie, a movie like Schindler's List. Watch it with your, ch your children if they're old enough to, to stomach a difficult graphic movie like this, and then have a discussion afterwards. Or visit a um, uh, Holocaust um, memorial museum. There's a great one in Washington, D.C., there's uh, also the Museum of Tolerance in Los Angeles on the West Coast. There's plenty of them all throughout the U.S. and, of course, Yad Vashem in Jerusalem and the many in Europe as well. If you have the ability and uh, if, if you can uh, travel to one of the camps in Eastern Europe and Germany and Poland, do it. This is a life-changing experience. I recommend you do it. Uh, but more than anything... Continue to remember the victims of the Holocaust, the unique, unique attempt at destroying uh, European Jews, and, uh, uh, and, and tell others. Education is key. Education is, is key in this matter. And more and more people are trying to rewrite the narrative. We, we cannot allow that to happen because eventually the Holocaust will become a myth or story of, of propaganda of some sort, and nobody will believe it really happened and then it will be even easier to paint the Jewish people as subhuman like it happened 80 years ago. If you think another Holocaust cannot happen, don't think too fast. Human nature is such that it is a lot easier to hate than to love. So friends, today, remember the Jewish people. Remember, today is International Holocaust Remembrance Day, January 27th. Take a moment to pray for your Jewish friends. Take a moment to uh, talk to your family, your friends, about the Holocaust. And commit to continue to educate yourself and educate others and speak up against the Holocaust, against anti-Semitism, and against racism and hatred of all kinds. In Yeshua. Be blessed.